good to see each one of you this morning Amen. on this Amen. September 11th, 2016. If you have your Bibles, we'll reread where we started service this morning and we'll, we'll dive into the Word. Joshua chapter 4, starting in verse 6, says that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? that ye will answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. The, the passage of Scripture, just using it for a taking off point, is, is God knows what He's doing when He gives us things to remember. He, he, uh, he had the children of Israel set up 12 stones just as a reminder so that when the future generations come by and they see the stones and they go, Daddy, what are these stones for? What is this pillar of rock? What's the purpose of it? And it's at that time it's supposed to spark a memory, not nostalgia at all, but just to tell them, Lord, this, this, this is where the Lord moved. This is where the Lord came down. This is where the miracle of God happened. In other words, it's a memorial. Amen. So do you remember? You know, it, it's been a while since September 11th fell on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. See, so how many of you today, if I, if I recount the events of 9-11-2001, how many of you could, could go through it with me? So I borrowed some from the Huffington Post because it helped... Uh, condense it a little bit for me, but on this 15th anniversary of, of the terrorist attacks against our nation, not the first, not the only, but it was the most deadly ever to be performed on our mainland in history. Mm -hmm. The plot began with the hijacking of four planes and ended with the deaths of nearly 3,000 people. Uh, they, they were in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. You know, it was a moment that we thought would be burned in our, in our memory. But do you remember? You see, at 7.59, the planes began taking off. The first was American Airlines Flight 11. Leaving Boston, headed for Los Angeles, it had 92 people on. At 8.14 a.m., United Airlines Flight 175 departed with 65 passengers. At 8.20, American Airlines Flight 77 leaves Dulles Airport with 64 people aboard. At 8.42 a.m., United Airlines Flight 93 leaves Newark with 44 passengers. At 8.46 a.m., the first crash occurs when Flight 11 slams to the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Do you remember yet? According to the 9-11 Commission report, two flight attendants contacted American Airlines as the plane is being hijacked to provide details of the emergency. They report the use of mace or some substance like mace, stabbings and bomb threats. The last known communication is from a flight attendant. Amy Sweeney on the phone to manager Michael Woodward says, oh my God, we're way too low. Do you remember? Second crash comes at 9.03 when flight 175 flies into the second tower. Last communication is with the air, tra air traffic control at 8.42, but passengers provide details of the flight by contacting their families by the phone. Now I'll go ahead and tell you, and I can't relate, okay? But Brian Swinney calls his wife, Judah, to tell her the plane has been hijacked. And Peter Hansen tells his father, Lee, I think they intend to go to Chicago or somewhere and fly into a building. Do you remember? At 9.31 a.m., George W. Bush addresses the country from Emma Booker, Washington, or Emma Booker Elementary School in Florida. He calls the, the attacks a national tragedy and an apparent terrorist attack on our country. 
Do you remember? 9.37 a.m. I mean, I want y'all to follow the timeline. It happens so fast. Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon. Do you remember? And after burning for 40, or 56 minutes, the South Tower collapses at 9.59 a.m., killing approximately 600 workers in first response. Jesus. Do you remember? At 10.03 a.m., the fourth hijacked plane crashes in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. This is the one we all seem to remember most because the 9-11 Commission report says that several passengers make calls from, the, from, their, from their plane or from the phones on their plane and receive word of the other hijackers. And upon hearing that they decide to fight back, the only one. Five calls describe the intent of the passengers as the surviving crew members. It's because they vote to rush the terrorists in an attempt to take back the plane. At 9.57, the assault began. One of the callers ended his call like this. Everyone's running to first class. I gotta go. Bye. But the one that we all remember was Todd Beamer, who was on the phone for well over 15 minutes with with emergency personnel, and he says, are you ready? Let's roll. You see, the hijackers, though, crashed the plane instead to prevent control being taken away from them. This crashed out in Shanksville in a 35-foot deep crater today are all those people's grave. Do you remember? Now, after burning for 102 minutes, at 10.28 a.m., the North Tower collapses, killing approximately 1,400 people. Do you remember? See, at 5.20 p.m., after, after the morning attacks, after hours have gone by, the 47-story World Trade Center building number seven collapses. No recorded deaths. The building was unoccupied. Do you remember? And of course, with all that being said, thus started our war on terrorism. Which I'm afraid today, I'll go ahead and tell you, I think that that one term right there has, has really been misunderstood and misapplied. It was our President George W. Bush who first used that term, the war on terror, on September 20th. And it's misapplied and misunderstood even till today. See, because we are not at war with terror, and we are not at war with terrorism, but rather, we are at war with Islam. Those who call themselves Muslims, and who at one time went by the name Mohammedans. Those who, they, they are the ones who have declared war with us. Amen. We declared war on terror, Amen. and the propagators of terrorism have declared war on us. Now listen to me, that just a very short answer today. You know, there, there, there is an answer to Islamic terrorism. Amen. All right? Amen. One of three things, or a good combination of all, probably is what's going to have to happen. If Islam wants to survive, if Islam wants to continue, it must have a reformation. If they want to continue to claim to be peaceful, religion they better show it in other words they're going to have to have a reformation from within Amen. the second and the one that of course that i, I lean towards is evangelism Amen. evangelism is the answer for islam Amen. every person who, who follows the islamic faith or wants to follow muhammad needs to hear that muhammad lied to you and jesus died for you Amen. That is the answer to the Islamic problem. And then the third is the one that we would prefer not. That is total destruction. Amen. That's just facts. I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's nice. It's just the way it is. So, so do you remember? Really? You see, I can remember when it happened. And you know the first thing that went through my mind? And this is going to sound silly. I said, this is our JFK moment. 
I can remember hearing my mom and my dad and aunts and uncles who just periodically for no reason could just tell you, I remember exactly where I was when JFK got shot. What was you? I'm getting there. Well, when JFK got shot, I wasn't even thought of, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is do you remember where you were? Do you remember who told you? Unless you were sitting close to a television. Do you remember who you were with? And the question I ask you today is do you remember how you felt? See, because we, we continually say and we see the billboards that say, never forget. And we must never forget. Whatever memorial you must establish for yourself, we must not forget this day. Amen. See, because I'm going to tell you my belief is, is that day was the shaking of our nation. That's right. It was the opportunity for the body of Christ to rise from her slumber and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. See, I remember. You see, I, I remember being at the Goose of Chemical Plant working on a project, trying to get a slab ready to pour, and I was working back around a bunch of heathens. I can remember. Amen. See, and I can remember when, when I can remember when Ski come over there to where I was. Hey, man, did you hear? I said, I've been at work all morning, Ski. He said, man, they done blew up the World Trade Center. So what are you talking about? What's that? He said, you come two big buildings up there in, in, in New York, man. Where, where everything happens. You know, them two towers, the twin towers. Oh, okay, I've seen a documentary about that. He said they done, they done blew up both of them. And I can remember the uneasy feeling that I had because I had had an uneasy feeling all day. I didn't know why. There was just something in my spirit. I had just been praying all day. And it was just uneasy. And then, of course, it was the peace of God that really began rushing over me. See, I started thinking of Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep you, or keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But when, when they come and told me, I started thinking about, you know, first of all, help us, Lord. Amen. And thank you for your perfect peace. Because Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on you because he trusts in you, Lord. And then the thing that really, really struck me was is that where I had been uneasy all morning, I was still uneasy, but I had this overwhelming peace in my spirit that day. I could, rem I could remember the faces and I could see the fear in their faces. See, Ski, the one who had come and told me, he was ex-military. He had, he had done quite a few uh, terms in the military. I don't know how you, how you say that. But all I can remember was is this six foot four, two hundred and fifty pound man ought not be afraid of anything, pacing back and forth. He couldn't sit still. He couldn't stop. He couldn't look at his drawings. He put his phone down. He put his radio down. Went and got in his truck and left for three days. Didn't tell anybody a thing. But he walked around pacing back and forth, muttering something about I gotta reload. And I can remember seeing the dread on the faces of the men. I'm talking about grown men there. I saw dread and I saw confusion. And they were just, some of them just were just confused is the only way to say it. Because by then they still haven't seen it. And I can remember hearing the words, we've got to pray. I, I remember those words that like they are burned. We, we have got to pray. And I remember seeing some, well, first of all, that were not scared to death. As a matter of fact, they were quite scared to life that day. You see, the shock of that day, of them actually seeing that there was real evil in the world. They, they, they showed the pictures of the hijackers, and it was nothing more than the face of evil. And it was in that moment that they became humbled in their hearts and when they were humbled, they received God's grace. Fulfilling the scripture that God resists the proud, but He gives grace 
to the home. Amen. If you see, I remember the newfound faith of people who had never trusted in Jesus Christ. A newfound faith and a newfound desire to serve Him. I also remember people that couldn't even remember the Pledge of Allegiance have become some of the biggest patriots I ever knew. I even know some that went back into the military, they re-enlisted. I know some that insisted on going back to enlist so they could fulfill their urge to serve. In other words, this shaking was supposed to wake up the body of Christ and it, it woke up some, brought some back to life, gave some new life, and it gave some the, the, the urge to serve. And I remember that. But I also remember it was in the days following. It was a moment in time just is trapped in my mind where our nation seemed like it would change. You see, because in that moment, in the blink of an eye, as a nation, we saw our need. Do y'all realize what the attacks were? It should have been an eye-opening experience, okay? Now, I, I, I don't fault George W. Bush because I believe he was God-given and God-sent at the time. Lord, don't know what we'd have done if we'd have had Al Gore. Okay? God-ordained, I believe that. But that misapplied term of war on terror, I'm not, I'm not beating him up about it. Do you understand that the enemy revealed itself that day to this nation? Amen. Amen. Most people forget that when we call it a terrorist attack, all we think of is some kind of a military attack against our nation. No, these were men who, who were dedicated to causing death and destruction. Do you realize the World Trade Centers is not on any military base at all? The closest thing to a military Sight was the Pentagon. You see, they weren't going after military sites. They were going after people. Anybody who was a United States citizen, anybody who could associate themselves with the great Satan has to go. And the enemy revealed himself that day. But I'm nervous because it seems that we have forgotten what happened that day. You see, because we have seemingly gone right back into the same mode that we were, we, we need to again humble ourselves. Amen. You see, when we study the book of Judges as we've been doing, one of the things that you notice right off the bat is, is when Israel does evil, the Lord doesn't have to do anything but remove His hand of protection and the enemy rushes in to take control. And it always has the same effect. It humbles the people of God that they might look up to Him. Amen. So we must humble ourselves or else the Lord will just allow things. That's right. Because what the Word teaches us is we reject Him as a nation, He will reject us Amen. as a nation. Amen. James 4.10 4, says, Humble yourselves in the sight of God that He may, or that He shall lift you up. 1 Peter 5, 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. These are, these are two commands. And none of us want to hear them because we think that we cannot humble ourselves. I promise you today, based on the Word of God, God does not give us commandments that are impossible. Amen. Amen. We can do it if we would through the strength and the power of the Spirit of God. You see, people can't humble themselves to come to the Lord when they're not saved unless the Spirit of God draws them. Amen. So I ask you today, do you remember? I really want you to give us some thought. Do you really remember? Because we absolutely must remember. Amen. You see, when the children of Israel set these rocks up, it was intentional of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you today whether you ever make it to the 9-11 memorial in, in any of the states. You need to set a memorial up whether it's in your own house or in your own sphere of influence and be intentional 
about remembering that day. Amen. Being, doing it on purpose. See, not only but so we can avoid future events because they're coming, but that we can pass an accurate account on to our children. Amen. See, because when your voice is gone, what voice will they hear? Amen. And I'm afraid that we have failed to remember so we have been given a memorial. It's one day that we may never forget. Now why, why would I say that I'm nervous about maybe that we have forgotten the day because we have allowed the high priests or the ministers of political correctness to steal our day. Our day of remembrance has been stolen because we don't want to talk about what it really was. It was an attack on who we are. Amen. Another effect that I want to talk to you today about, about the 9-11 tragedy was that it affected those who only look for God. Well, there's tragedy. Mm -hmm. You know the blame God crowd, don't you? Yeah. Somebody dies, it's God's fault. Mm -hmm. Fly, planes flying the building, it's God's fault. Somebody gets sick, it's God's fault. And listen to me, God did not perform the acts of terrorism that we've talked about today. He allowed it in His providence because we understand. Romans 8.28 says, For we know all things work together for good to those that love God and the called according to His purpose. There is nothing happening that He doesn't know. There is nothing going to happen that He doesn't have an understanding of. But it was that time in our nation's history when we had all become complacent. And don't we all become complacent with our walk with God? Amen. And see, these people, I, said, I, don't, I don't stress about them too much because you know that they're the same ones that complain about when the sound don't go right. Yeah. See, nobody bothers thinking about the sound man or the sound system <laughs> until the sound don't work. Amen. See, if I, if I walk over here to the microphone and I was getting ready to say, Y'all go, where is the sound man? And that is what happened on 9-11. There were many that day who had not given God a second thought in 50 years. And when tragedy came, they start looking up going, where's God? Amen. Let me go ahead and tell you right now. God is right where He always has been. Yes, he he always is. will be. He is on the throne today. Amen. Yes, He is. So today, as I encourage you to remember, as I implore you to remember, remember, you're looking at one of the most unsentimental people you ever will meet. I'm not sentimental nor nostalgic. And that's not what I'm asking you to do. But I say purposely and intentionally take time to remember. Remember what you saw. Remember what really happened. Amen. And I want you to remember how it made you feel. You see, because you know, James 1, 2, and 4 says it like this. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or, or trials. Knowing this, that the trying or the testing of your faith works patience or endurance. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire or complete, mm -hmm. wanting nothing. Nothing missing. You see, you should take time today to look back and remember if this was something God allowed, what was it allowed for? It was to wake up His church. Don't get angry at God. Let, let this tragedy, let this remembrance do what it is designed to do. Let it humble you once again. Yes, Lord. Let, let the understanding of it, let, let it turn your mind back to why would God allow this horrible thing happen to all these good people? Yes, sweet Jesus. It should be the day that it should ring in your mind that the best we have to offer God is nothing but filthy rags. And our works and our effort is not good, but a stench in the nostrils 
of God. As we remember the tragedy, the thought that we should have is, Lord, forgive me for being hard, for being complacent, for being apathetic. Lord, forgive me for not caring about you until tragedy strikes. Lord, forgive me for not going to church until it takes deaths of thousands of people. See, as we look back on this tragedy, and I ask you, do you remember? Have you taken time to remember to put just really dig down into the, to the recesses of your mind and remember how it made you feel that day? See, it should drive you to the place to where you repent and turn to Jesus. It, it should remind you the day that you repented and trust in Jesus for your salvation, for your renewal, if you will. Yes. You know, John 3.16 says it best, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah, you know, that, that I, it is a wore out cliche, cliche message at times to listen to. 9-11 was trying to shake some people to life. 9-11 was, was the Lord using this, these evil men to try to wake His church up, get them out, and do what they are called to do. Amen. It's not meant to be a day of rebuke for the church, but you know when a person sells their body for money, we call it prostitution. Did y'all hear that? When anyone sells their body for money, we call it prostitution. And I'm afraid that's what the body of Christ has done. We have sold the body of Christ for money. We, we have become interested in building buildings and filling it full of people. Rather than building the kingdom of God and filling it with souls. The Lord didn't call us to build His church. He said He would take care of that. He told us to go into all the world and preach, baptize, and make disciples. See, see, I hope today on this day of memorial, as you think back to that day, where you were, who you were with, how it made you feel, the things you saw, will it make you more bitter at God or will it make things better in your life between you and Him? See, I can agree with Joseph. The things that you meant for evil, God has used them for good. Amen. Y'all stand this morning. It's kind of an indented message, but I want you to have time to, to remember today. I want you to take time to remember today and reflect on this day. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you today. I thank you for each soul here. I thank you that we can come into your house. I thank you that you've sent us this day, Lord, to remember not just the bad that has happened, but the good that you have for us. Father, I ask that you would bless the souls here this morning. That you would touch each heart and mind. Lord, help them to turn to you and be humble today under your mighty hand and be exalted in due time. We ask it all in Jesus' name.